Welcome to week three of U.S. history. So this week, we will be covering some important aspects of early American history. So let's start with the Congress's plan for the settlement and governance of Western lands. So during the years immediately following the revolution, one of the pressing issues was the expansion into the Western territories. Congress devised a plan to organize and govern these lands, culminating in the Northwest Ordinance of 1787. This ordinance laid the groundwork for the orderly creation of new states in the Northwest Territory, including what would become Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Michigan, and Wisconsin. So you might have heard of the Midwest as a short term for that area. Now, although on the U.S.'s map, it is in actually more central and more to the east. It is called the Midwest because at the time, all the settlers, of course, were in New England, that is the Northeast and West. The lands that they knew of were those of Ohio, of Indiana, Illinois, and so on. That's why it is called the Midwest. So we're also going to talk about um, why tensions with foreign countries revealed the weaknesses of the U.S. government during this period. So the early years of the United States were marked by diplomatic tensions and conflicts with foreign powers. The most significant of these was the ongoing conflict with Britain and Spain over issues like trade, territorial boundaries, and control of the Mississippi River. These disputes highlighted the fragility of the U.S. government under the Articles of Confederation. The central government lacked the power to negotiate treaties effectively or raise revenue through taxes, making it challenging to address these foreign policy issues. So again, when we're talking about the weaknesses of the Confederation, we're talking about the central government's inability to tax and sort of to generate revenue to pay its debt and its power, its, its lack of power to negotiate treaties effectively. So I'm going to talk quickly about some of the main weaknesses of the articles. I will not go into each and every one in detail, but I will just list them. We're going to discuss five in class. So the lack of central authority, as mentioned, they were weak and they could not levy taxes or regulate trade, leading to financial instability. Two is no executive branch. There was no executive branch to enforce laws or coordinate government actions, which hindered effective governance. There was no national currency, so the dollar wasn't there. States issued their own currencies, causing economic chaos and making trade difficult. The military and defense was ineffective. They couldn't maintain a standing army, leaving the nation vulnerable to external threats. And the amendment process was very difficult. It required unanimous, meaning the consent of all states, making it nearly impossible to make significant changes. Moving on, we're going to discuss the principles of the Constitution. So the U.S. Constitution established several core principles, one being of federalism. This is a system of shared powers between federal and state governments. The separation of powers. This is a very, very, very important aspect of American politics. We divided, they divided the government into three branches that we spoke about, the legislative, executive, and judicial. A checks and balances system is the third point. The branches were decide to check each other and to make sure that no branch could dominate the other. And fourth is the limited government. So the Constitution established limits on the government's authority, protecting individual rights and liberties. The Bill of Rights, which we said was the ten, first 10 amendments, further reinforced these protections. Now, by the end of the week, we're going to preview Unit 5. We're going to talk about Washington's administration and the building of the federal government. So Washington, as the first president of the United States, set many important precedents. He established the executive branch's authority, enforced federal laws, and successfully navigated foreign policy challenges. His leadership helped stabilize the new nation, and his farewell address emphasized the importance of unity and warned against political factionalism 
and foreign entanglements. Washington's administration also saw the establishment of key federal institutions, including the creation of the first federal bank and the implementation of a national economic plan by Alexander Hamilton. So these steps laid the foundation for a stronger, more centralized federal government and set the United States on the path to becoming a stable and prosperous nation. So we will discuss all of these sections in more detail during class this week. And I look forward to seeing you all. Thank you.